Hey guys, it's Courtney. Today I'm going to be creating five cards with the May 2019 kit by Hero Arts. This is the My Monthly Hero kit. So the first four cards are going to be very clean and simple. And I get a lot of questions, what's considered clean and simple? To me, it doesn't necessarily mean they're simple. These will be simple, but usually clean and simple means that there's not a whole lot of bulk to the card. There's a lot of white space and it's a very clean design. So the first four is going to be very clean and simple. So I went ahead and used the outline of the heart die from the kit. Die cut that from a piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock and then took another piece of Nina Solar White. And I'm just doing a little bit of Distress Oxide ink blending with seedless preserves in the background. And I just need enough ink so that when I lay this heart down, just that part is gonna be showing through with the seedless preserves. So I flicked on some clean water and dabbed that up with a paper towel and then I will go ahead and put this aside to completely dry. Then I'm going to take yet another piece of Nina Solar White and I'm going to go ahead and stamp out the images I'm going to be using for this particular card. So I'm using, it's actually a card <laughs> image as well as an envelope and a marker that closely resembles a Copic marker. So of course you guys know that I'm going to use that. I am stamping with blackout ink by Ink on 3 because it is a Copic safe ink. And I'm going to speed up the coloring throughout this entire video. Otherwise, we would have been here for about an hour and a half. So I kept the coloring pretty simple. I want the envelope and majority of the card to be white. So I'm just adding a little bit of shading with my C markers, using the C5 as my darkest color, just using that very sparingly where the deepest shadows would be. So pretty much where the flap of that envelope would lay over the rest of the envelope and just in the lower left-hand corner of that card using the C3 to just extend those areas out a little bit further and add just a little bit more shading in the not so dark areas. And then finally going in with the C1 and flicking that C3 out, still leaving some white space because I want these to appear white. And then I will quickly go over the area where I kind of flicked out to with my colorless blender so that I get rid of those flick lines and it's more of a seamless blend. Now I did add color to the heart here and I should have waited because I just used the colorless blender and my paper is saturated with that colorless blender. So what happens when you color over that colorless blender, especially when it's still wet, is your colors are going to bleed. So I'll fix that in just a minute. Going to move on to the marker and I'm gonna switch over to some warm grays just using the C5, C3, uh, no, the W5, W3, and W1, leaving a highlight in the center of the marker because that would be a round object, and just using one of those purple markers that I used before to show that the marker is the same color as this heart. Using that colorless blender to try to fix up these areas where my color had bled out, and it took up most of it, but it didn't take up all of it. So once that dries, I will have to use a white gel pen to fix up those areas. Next, I'm going to go ahead and add my sentiment. I treated my cardstock with my anti-static tool, and then I will go ahead and stamp out my sentiment. And I'm using the embossing powder that comes in the kit, as well as the embossing ink that comes in the kit, which is a clear sticky ink and embossing powder will obviously stick to it so it's very similar to like a versamark you will want to make sure that you treat your anti treat your cardstock with the anti-static tool especially when you're using this type of embossing powder because it's glittery and it sticks everywhere so once i sprinkled that on i did have a few stray pieces not where my sentiment is. So I just used a dry paintbrush to kind of brush those away before I heat set that. Keep in mind that when you do heat set this, you are not going to see a change like you would with white embossing powder or a metallic embossing powder. It's pretty much going to look the same. So I went over this twice just to make sure that it was heat set being I can't actually see if it is. So next I'm going to go ahead and adhere this heart panel down to my ink blended panel and I'm using my wet glue here. I'm using Tombow Mono Multi Glue just so that I can have a couple of seconds to reposition it if I need to. And then once that's done, I will go ahead and position all of my little die cut pieces there inside that heart. And I just used my Scotch foam tape to pop those up. 
and that is it very very clean and simple for card number one and we'll move on to card number two and for this one it's going to be more of a one layer card kind of so i'm going to go ahead and stamp out my images directly onto my card panel and this is a piece of nina solar white 80 pound card stock cut down to five and a half by four and a quarter and i'm just pretty much concentrating my images being in the lower left hand corner again this is a clean and simple card so there's going to be a whole lot of white space so i'm going to kind of bunch these together just using three of the images from the stamp set not worried about any masking here just kind of spacing these out so i don't have to mask so we're going to jump into the copic coloring again going to speed this up a little bit starting off with my e30 to fill in this entire little palette here to get my paper saturated so that my colors blend a little bit easier Next, going in with the E33, and I'm just going to create some squiggly lines here, and this will kind of give the palette some texture as if it is like a wooden palette. And going to add a little bit of shading off to the left-hand side where it kind of dips in a little bit. Next, going in with the E37 and just adding a few little squiggly lines just in the darkest area and kind of deepen up some of that shadow that we had created with the E33. Going back to the E33 to blend that out, then the E31, extending that out even further, and then bringing back in that E30 to fill in the entire thing. And that will kind of soften up those little squiggly lines so it's not so, I don't want to say noticeable, but it's it blends a little bit easier. Next, for the tube of paint here, I am I want this to appear to be kind of like the metal-ish. So first I took an EK Success journaling pen and this is a Copic Safe pen to just draw in additional lines so it appears as if this has a label to it. And I'm going to concentrate my shading being on either side, keeping a very strong center highlight because if this tube of paint was full of paint, it would be more of a round object. So I'm going to keep a strong highlight there in the center, just using my C markers to create that. And then I'll finish off with the C1 right there in the center. And for the paintbrush the same thing this would be a round object as well so this is really super tiny so you're not going to be able to do a whole lot of shading here but i'm switching over to some e20 markers going to fill in this whole thing with the e21 shade shading on either side uh, with the e25 then blending that out with the e23 then back to the e21 i did have to go back in with the e25 which is my darkest just to kind of deepen up those shadows to make this appear more round but i didn't have to blend that back out for the brush itself just use the e29 e25 and e23 and for the label on the paint i want this to make it look like as if it's a tube of red paint so going to use some r markers again concentrating the shading on either side keeping a very strong center highlight to make this appear to be round now next i went ahead and once all the coloring was done and you can see that i'm skipping the little blobs of paint there on the palette for now <laughs> i'm going to go ahead and stamp out my sentiment with black dye ink by simon says stamp directly above my images making sure i'm leaving a whole lot of white space then i ended up trimming this down so i took a quarter of an inch off the left hand side as well as the top and then i'm going to layer this onto a piece of black cardstock that is cut just slightly larger than this panel but a little bit smaller than an A2 size note card. So I have a nice border on each one of my panels. Adhering those all together with my Tombow Mono Multi Glue, again, gives me a couple of seconds to kind of move things around. And then I'm going to add the paint on the palette and give a little bit of texture to the card. So I'm gonna be using some Nouveau Drops here and I'm using a rainbow of colors here. You'll see that I squirt a little bit out onto a scrap piece of paper off to the side just to make sure that there's no air bubbles before I bring that to my card base or the card itself. Sometimes it likes to kind of squirt out and spray all over the place. So I will always use a little scrap piece of paper on the side. I am using Red Berry sugared almond apple green caribbean ocean and crushed grape and i'm just keeping these like i said in a rainbow order 
and I'll let this dry. I usually let about an hour or so go by before I kind of pile anything on top of the card, making sure that they're completely dry before I play around too much with the card. Next, we'll move on to the third card. And again, this is gonna be another very, very clean and simple card. The kit comes with a roll of washi tape and it's very, a very pale purple color. So I want to use the die cuts. And I, I love the feel of washi tape and I love this color. So I'm taking another piece of white cardstock here and I'm just gonna layer rows and rows and rows of the washi tape, making sure that they're snug up against each other so that it makes it look as if the whole panel's pretty much covered with this washi tape, which it is. <laughs> Next, I am going to go ahead and take the heart die as well as the um, I don't know what the crochet needle maybe. I don't know if it's crochet. I don't know anything about sewing. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and run this through my Gemini and just use my little Cricut tool to kind of poke out some of these holes from the heart yarn die. They did kind of stick in there um, and I think it's just because it was washi tape and it's sticky. <laughs> but I had no problem popping those out. Next I'm going to take another piece of white cardstock here and this is actually my card panel taking another strip of that washi tape just to place that on the left hand side and just fold over the edges and this will just give an, a little added interest to my card kind of played around with the placement of my die cuts I wasn't sure exactly how I wanted these once I was happy with that I'm going to go ahead and take one of the sentiments from the stamp set and I'm going to be using passion flower ink by Hero Arts, which is a very, very close match to the washi tape that comes in the kit. And I'm just going to go ahead and stamp that right above where I'm going to be placing my images. Then once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and adhere my images again using my Tombow Mono Multi Glue. You can use a double-sided adhesive like a Stick It or I think Sizzix has one. There's a few different brands before you run it through your die cut machine and you can kind of just stick it down onto your panel. I don't really trust myself, so I prefer to use the wet glue. That way it gives me a couple of seconds to move things around before it totally adheres to the paper. Once I have those two down, I am going to add a few embellishments around my images there, and I'm gonna bring out some jewel drops by Nouveau, and these are Pale Periwinkle. And I'm just going to add a few drops around or underneath that sentiment. Then to add a little bit more added interest, I'm going to bring out my glossy accents, which I've kind of been obsessed with lately. And I'm gonna pretty much go over the entire die cut. Again, I'm gonna squirt a little bit out of this out on a piece, scrap piece of paper to make sure there's no air bubbles. Then just go around that those two die cut pieces. Now this will appear cloudy in the beginning, but once it dries, it will be completely clear and it will just give some added shine to the die cut pieces so they're not just glued on, which is exactly what they are. <laughs> Again, clean and simple. So once that one was done, we are going to go ahead and move on to the fourth clean and simple card. And I'm going to be using just the paintbrush stamp from the stamp set other than the sentiment using another piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock. And I'm just going to use my ruler to kind of mark off every half inch. And this is just for placement purposes for me. You can certainly use a stamp positioner, but I just figured it was easier for me to do this. I am taking, like I said, that paintbrush stamp and using my Ink on 3 or my Blackout Ink by Ink on 3 again because I am going to do some Copic coloring. And I'm just going to use those little pencil lines as my guide as to where I need to stamp these images so that they're evenly placed. Once that is done, I am going to go ahead and color these paintbrushes the same way as I colored that first paintbrush that we had done. I believe it was in card number two. So I'm not going to show you all of the coloring of the paintbrush itself. Once that was done, I'm going to add some brush stroke type things <laughs> coming off from each one of the paintbrushes. Again, going to use rainbow order here. So I'm going to show you in real time just two of them just to kind of show you how I'm doing this. I'm laying out my lightest color, going in with my darkest color where it's coming from the paintbrush itself. Then I'll flick that color out a little bit with my midtone and then go back to my lightest color 
just for the end of the brush stroke, I should say. Next, we'll move on to an orange combination. And again, starting off with my lightest color to kind of get my paper saturated a little bit. Darkest color will be closest to the brush, flicking that out with the mid-tone and then back to that lightest color. Now, I should have probably counted the amount of paintbrushes I had because I actually had one too many, or actually two too many for a rainbow, but I ended up adding a pink in there, so I was okay, and then ended up having to add red on the end of the card as well. Now, I have everything sped up here because I did my shading exactly the same way each and every time obviously just with a different color combination. So I did keep all of the coloring in here just so that you can see the different color combinations that I did use for the card. In case you are looking to expand your Copic collection and not sure which ones you should purchase, or if you maybe already have some Copics and you're not sure what goes with what. Some of these are natural blending families, others are not. They're ones that I've just experimented with over time and found that they really blend well together and you don't get maybe the traditional blend that is intended when they do their little numbering system. So here we're moving on to the pinks and I initially had the RV14 as my mid-tone and RV11 as my lightest color. RVs can be a little bit tricky and they weren't blending so well so I ended up bringing in the RV13 as a second mid-tone just to get those colors to blend a little bit better. Once that was done, I am going to go ahead and take some off of the right hand side just so that my paintbrushes are a little bit more centered and I don't have that big gap. Going to adhere this to a black A2 size note card. Oh, actually first I believe I stamped my sentiment with that same black dye ink by Simon Says Stamp, which is my favorite ink to use for sentiments. It gives you a very crisp image, but you don't have to wait for it to dry because it is a dye ink, so it does dry to the touch immediately. So once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and place that down onto my card base here, and that is it for card number four, that is it for the clean and simple cards. Now, a lot of people refer to one layer cards as being clean and simple cards. To me, not all one layer cards are clean and simple. So my fifth card is going to be more of a Courtney card, I guess, and it's gonna be more of a one layer scene. So I'm gonna speed this up because this card took me a little bit of time, but usually when I create a scene, I always start off with my pencil. And that way I can kind of cover up what I need to cover up, erase what I need to erase, and these will just give me guides. Now, typically when I create a scene, I like to stick with pretty much straight lines because I can't draw. Despite what some people believe, I cannot draw. So most of my scenes, you'll notice that I am using a ruler. So I'm using also my grid mat for measurement purposes to make sure everything is kind of spaced out correctly. And you can kind of see something coming together, but it doesn't really look like much at this point. Now, before I go over my pencil lines with my Copic Safe Pen, that's when I do my stamping. So before I do my stamping, I need to erase any lines that I don't need. So I just do drew pretty much straight lines, but some of those I don't actually need. So I did erase those before I do my stamping so that I don't get too confused as far as where my stamping needs to go. So in case you haven't noticed, this is going to basically be a shelf with a bunch of crafty stuff on it. I have done a card before where, um, I think it was a Create a Smile stamp set where it was actually a desk with all of this crafty stuff on it. So I didn't want to do the same thing. So I figured we all have shelves that are probably just as messy as my shelves in my craft room. So I figured I'll recreate that on my card. For this particular area, I am gonna go ahead and draw a little cup here, I guess. And this will be where my paint brushes and my ruler are kind of going to be sticking out of. I don't obviously have a mask for that because I am just freehanding it. So I'm just using a piece of post-it note tape to mask off the bottom portion of it so that I can stamp out my little marker and my paintbrush and whatever else I want in this little cup. Because I'm using white post-it note tape, I can still see through it so I can kind of still 
so have a guide as to where my little cup is going to be. I didn't get a great impression with the ruler and I think that's my fault. When I cut out the mask for the ruler and I cleaned off my stamp, I don't think the stamp was completely dry when I stamped with it. But before we actually move on to the coloring, I'm just gonna use one of my EK Success journaling pens and go over that same image to kind of darken those areas up so that it looks more of a crisp image. So I'm stamping from front to back. So anything I want in front of another, I am stamping and masking first, and then I'll stamp anything that is more in the background last. I did fill in any gaps with some additional images that maybe I didn't necessarily plan on using. I also masked certain images that I didn't actually have to mask. <laughs> I wasn't sure what I was going to need, so I ended up having masks for everything and didn't need them. But that's okay because those I can reuse them in a, another project. So once all of my stamping was complete, I will go ahead and go over everything with my EK Success journaling pens. And the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and fix up that ruler. And the the journaling pens that I have different have different tips, has different size tips. So here I'm using the smallest one for the image itself and for this little cup. So I'm pretty much just going over those pencil lines that I had created to as a guide as to where my cup is going to be. You don't have to be an artist to draw something like this. It's super easy and you can kind of hide any artistic ability or lack of <laughs> with the way you color objects. So as long as you color them and shade them great, it doesn't really matter what your drawing looks like. So once that was done, I'm gonna go ahead and bring back out my ruler. This is where I'm gonna make my lines more permanent. So I'm gonna start off with my horizontal lines and then I'll worry or work on kind of the shelving itself, just using these horizontal lines as a guide so that I don't kind of lose where each shelf is, I guess. So once that was done, we are going to move on to the coloring. And again, this is kind of all the way you shade it. You can leave it just like this. You don't have to do any shading on the shelf itself. You will wanna make sure that you erase all of your pencil lines that may be kind of showing through that you didn't completely cover up with that EK Success journaling pen, because once you color over it, you will not be able to erase it. I also did have a few smudges. Sometimes a Copic Safe pen, regardless of what kind you use, doesn't necessarily dry as quick as ink. So I did have some smudges there, just using my sand eraser to get rid of those. So I'm just going to show you one of the shelves here because I colored all three shelves the same way. I'm going to use my C markers because I want this to appear white. So I'm just adding some shading in the back. So when there is an object, the further back that object is, the darker it will be. Also where the shelves or the pieces of the shelf kind of come together would also create a shadow. So I'm just using my C5, C3, and C1 and eventually bring in my colorless blender again to get rid of those flick lines to have more of a seamless blend. And I wasn't liking the way this was looking. It didn't look like there was enough shading. It seemed like all the shading was in the back. So I ended up adding a little bit of shading where the shelf part comes up from the sides of the shelf, if that makes any sense. But I skipped the C5, which is my darkest color, and just added C3 and C1 so it wasn't all that dark. And then I'm going to add shadows underneath each one of my objects with the same colors. So I'm going to start off with that C5 to create a shadow under each one of these objects blend that out with the C3, and then finally bringing in the C1 to blend out the rest of those shadows. And I colored each one of the shelves the same way, with the exception of the ones underneath. I did also create a shadow where the one shelf above it would create a shadow, if that makes sense. So moving on to the coloring, as you can see, I have this sped up a lot. The washi tape we're going to start off with is a round object again, so we're going to keep a center highlight for that, color the entire thing in with some greens, and for the little stripes or the little designs, I'm going to color those in red, so it will kind of be like a Christmas washi. The darker red will be on either side, and the lighter red will be in the center, again, keeping up with that center light or the center 
highlight for the round object. For the little stamps, I'm going to switch over to some E30 markers, concentrating my shading. They're kind of tilted down, so I'm going to concentrate my shading being on the right-hand side and on either side of the stamp. Color the stamp underneath the same way with the same color combination as well. And I'm going to use those E30 markers for the ruler too. Just concentrating a little bit of shading off to the right hand side. No rhyme or reason for that. I just picked a side. <laughs> Going to switch over to some warm gray markers just so that it doesn't blend in with my background too much to color in this little card here and coloring this the same way as I did for the first card, just adding a little bit of shading so that it doesn't appear so that it's just not completely white. Using those same warm gray markers for this little cup here, again, round object would have a very strong center highlight, so the shading will still make this look, you know, like I didn't draw it myself. <laughs> Going to use some warm gray markers for the two markers as well, the two little Copic markers, one in the cup, one laying down. Again, just keeping a center highlight, pretty much coloring these the same way as I did for that first card. Next, we're going to move on to those same greens to color this little bottle of glue. I use the Tombow Mono Multi Glue. It is this color green, so I figured I would just stick with it. Again, this is a round object, so I'm just concentrating my shading being on either side. For the darkest color, I just added a teeny tiny bit. I pretty much just went a straight line on the out, outer edge and then blended that out each time, including the little nozzle, I guess you could call it, on the or the tip of the glue bottle. Just using the C3 and C1 for the label, just adding a little bit of shading on either side for that. And next I am going to add a little bit of the um, cool gray markers, but bringing in a little bit darker this time. So the C7, C5, and C3 for the paint brushes or the handles of the paint brush anyway. And then for the brush themselves, I am going to bring in some E50 markers, just concentrating my shading being on the base of the brush itself. For the pencils, going to bring in the E15 as my darkest color and then some Y markers to kind of brighten those up a little bit and color the tips of them one red, one blue, and I'm obviously not doing any shading on that area because it is really, really, really tiny. So next, going to bring in a yellow combination for this next roll of washi tape. And this is a round object, but you can see that it's kind of a piece of the washi is coming out. So it's curved. So I'm actually going to add some shading where it's curved in. And the where it's curved out will have that highlight, if that makes any sense. Going to fill in those little dots. Oh, here's where I realized I forgot to finish my line there. And going to add some blue dots to that washi tape. Again, the outer edge or those shadow areas will have a little bit darker of a blue. And then I'll switch over to the lighter blue for those lighter areas of the washi. Going to make one of these Copic markers or these alcohol markers blue, and then I will add some red to the other marker that's in that little cup there. Going to add those same reds for this little heart and not sure what I was thinking. I figured this was an easy object <laughs> to color and I totally went out of the lines. So I fixed that up with a white gel pen, but reds are very, very difficult to take away. So you'll see as the gel pen starts to dry, some of that red will kind of start to seep through, but we'll fix that in a minute. So next for this tube of paint, I am going to use some warm gray markers for that and for the paint itself going to switch over to some B markers just adding a little bit of shading kind of where it's a little bit curvy I guess. I should have stamped that watercolor bottle or that bottle of watercolor a little bit more in the background because this kind of looks like the paint is kind of just floating in midair but it is what it is. So I'm going to use that same th those same blues for that little label on the paint tube and then switching over to those same yellow combinations that we use for that run roll of washi tape to color in the bottle of watercolor. Again, concentrating my shading, being on either side, keeping a center highlight for the round object. Going to add just a little bit of shading to the label itself with some gray markers, just adding the shading, still leaving a lot of white space so that this object still appears to be white. 
So going back in and trying to fix up that heart a little bit and adding some reflections to some of these objects here to make them look a little bit more round or a little bit more shiny. Then I'm going to trim down my panel a little bit from the top and a little bit on either side, the same amount on either side to make sure my shelf is still centered. And that way these shelves look about the same size rather than those two top ones being a lot bigger than the smaller one. Going to adhere this to an A2 size note card and just leave a small white border around all four sides. And for my sentiment, this is actually going to have to go in the center because I don't have any room on the outside and I don't want to really take away from the images themselves. Just adding a little bit of sparkle to some of the objects and then I will stamp the sentiment in the center with that same dye ink by Simon Says Stamp. And that is it. That is card number five. So here's a quick look at the four very, very clean and simple cards that we had created along with our one layer card that is not so clean and not so simple. Thanks for stopping by guys. Bye.